Yo, so this your boy Rex Hardy. Welcome back to the Untold. Got my brothers. You already know Teddy was here. He's here. He'll be here again. <laughs> but <laughs> we got my other big brother, Calvin Rogers. What? Listen. All three of us in the room. Yeah, that's <laughs> Rex. Teddy and Calvin behind have some mics in Chicago. This yeah, that's six hours. <laughs> Golly. You'd be like, yo, are y'all coming home for Thanksgiving or no? <laughs> no, this is crazy. Right. Like, about to, what 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 uh what news y'all about to drop on that? <laughs> <laughs> Dog man, listen, bro, like Calvin, you already know. Like to have y'all two here, like, same thing I just told Mike. You don't know me. <laughs> unless they know y'all yeah. <laughs> you get what i'm saying and like for real for real like uh, i was talking to teddy early like calvin on some for real like i'm the one to give you your flowers bro like this is a whole because this generation we're in is just uh it seemed like it's just take yeah. you know what i'm saying so for me like i want you to know like how much you mean to the industry i don't say gospel because that ain't no that you know how i feel about yeah. that that ain't no it's like when you Take, when you can take over the sound of a genre, that makes you broader than, you get what I'm saying, what people, and I want you to know, bro, there's a lot of people whose lives you've changed. Like, Single-handedly. Oh, oh, absolutely. Single-handedly, yeah. And it's like, for me, I think, being there from basically the beginning, you know what from I'm saying? I think you were eight, and I, something like that, yeah. or you probably earlier than that. Yeah, I was. I, I met you before, right before I turned eight. Cause I remember not owning drums when we met. Oh yeah, <laughs> you know I rem- and I didn't get drums till I our, to my eighth birthday. What, what did y'all? What did y'all talk about at eight? Like <laughs> drums, eight. That, drums. We talked that was about a long drums. time to be knowing each other. Eight man. years. I, so <laughs> I'll be forty two. Yeah, Thursday. Two, two, yeah, forty two. You'll be forty two. I turned forty five a week and a half ago. So I mean, we was you know my dad. Mm. Came to God's House of All Nations when, because I I was there right before Mother Bato passed, mm-hmm. and uh and your dad and your grandfather was a pastor there. Well, I, my dad came to God's House of All Nations, met Rex. We spent a holiday together. Oh yeah, uh, <laughs> well you were staying on Green. On Green, yeah. yeah. And so, so that's why I don't know each other because you played at his church. My dad, yeah, my dad went to work with God's House of All Nations mm-hmm. and. Of course, you know, like everywhere when I was the same way I was hanging around him when he was doing Chicago Mass mm-hmm. records, uh, I was hanging around him at God's House of All Nations and met Rex, who was into everything. Rex mm-hmm. was an actor. He was an athlete. <laughs> he was a musician. I, was, I had no idea who I was. No, you know. I, was, that's, I, I mean, mean that's I was just who... trying to, I was just, I wasn't Figure into music as he was mm-hmm. because I, like I said, that's what I meant. I didn't know what I was going to do. But yeah, man, Rex was. <laughs> did you know Rex was in a like a Michael Jordan commercial? Did you know no. that? No, really, you did not know that. I didn't. You didn't. Know that. Rex is in a Michael oh, Jordan yeah. commercial when he was with like, Mike. When oh he yeah, was like he was like six years old. Yeah, I was like, yeah, I was the man when I went back to school. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, me and Mike, we was hanging. He out. was in a Michael Jordan commercial. <laughs> no dog. lie. Why hasn't any of that? We got to find. You got to find that no, you got, I think I put that up before. I repost it. We'll show it within this. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, I played him as a, it was in the uh, Chevy commercial. Yeah. Oh, you played him as a kid. Yep. Bouncing the ball, everything. Yeah. He was no just, lie. So you can play basketball? What? Right you now? never seen Rex Hoop? Oh, dog. I'm he used nice. to, he, he, yeah. <laughs> he used to be in it like, I don't know how big the rim was, but I remember seeing him dunk. I was like, oh my God. I he dunked it on regulation. I was at, no, it was, that wasn't was, regulation. It was the, Rim in our church wasn't regular. Yeah, it was okay. probably like nine, nine. He did a and backwards half. dunk. 
But for me, <laughs> I was good. I I mean, but yeah, I can't hoop. But it's like the reality of it is, I'm not a hooper. <laughs> like Barris. You know them guys, the Ray Beatty, take, Bears they, and Ray take basketball. They take it way, so way, far, way too far. Yeah. and I get—I mean, I get it, but no, nah. <laughs> like, nah, like I think the last time I played for real was like in a memorial game that little Tony threw or something. It after that, I was like, no, nah, because I'd be the one to get hurt. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But yeah, no nah, basketball, I loved it. Bro. Well, so, so when I met Rex, like he was doing all of that. <laughs> he he could hoop because I went to their their uh, summer camp. At the church, uh, yeah. uh, Mother Bessie Bato day camp. Yeah. <laughs> so Rex, they had a goal outside. Rex could hoop. He was play. He could come in there and play drums. He was a in, on a commercial with Michael Jordan. I was just like, God, please. <laughs> but too uh, much. yeah, 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 I was all over the place. And, uh, but I didn't. And, and so I didn't have any drums. So I would go to Rex. I went to. I remember Rex came to came to my house one year. Maybe some days after Christmas. Yeah. Like our our family did like a maybe like a, a Christmas party some days after Christmas. I remember Rex coming to my crib and uh, I had all of the to- all of the boxes from the toys I got for Christmas set up. All the toys was in the corner and I had all the boxes set up as as a drum set. <laughs> in the kitchen. I remember that. Like it was just your drum. Those were my drums, yep. And, and I already had a set. Yep. But what was funny is I was as hyped to play on his boxes. <laughs> yeah. I was like, well, this is what we, we spent, got. Yeah. We spent hours in, in there, like, just on that. And we developed a, a, a friendship, a uh, brotherhood from from there. Like, and yeah, I, 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 that's crazy, man. You know, you know, you kind of, I, I don't know the, the history. You know, I know, like, y'all was very close. We've been knowing each other for a long time. Yeah. But that... You know, that's very powerful, man, because, I mean, understanding and knowing the history is like, why, now we know why you guys cannot be separated. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? No like, matter what we go through. Yeah, yeah, like, what's hey, going to happen? We coming right back like, all right, yeah, I see to that, in them bo- that kitchen yeah. in them oh, boxes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, man. So we, we long years, years. And I learned so much from Rex, too. Like, I learned, I learned... I learned as much as I learned from you. I probably learned just as much from Rex. Of course. You'd be Pro- pro- you'd probably know. more. And yeah. that's something that's not talked about a yeah. lot because we talk about, you know, Rex, Rex, Rex is real. He, he, you know, he, he talks a lot about his story. He gives a lot of information mm-hmm. about his story. I don't know if I've, if I've had, if, if I've been as vocal mm-hmm. as he has, because mm-hmm. he talks, you know, he, he gives a lot of information. That's one thing Rex does. Like, he go, he gonna give you information, mm-hmm. but uh, I haven't I, I I don't do that as much as he does, and that's something I should probably do more. But I learned probably as much from you. I probably learned just as much from Rex. I mean, I didn't know oh. anything about. I got the R. Kelly gig. I didn't know anything about like they was they brought pads for me. I didn't know anything <laughs> about that, you know. Uh, um, and really, you know, there's two. This is now. This is something. That I don't know if people realize, but in my playing, when I was really spending a lot of time with you, I was really wanting to be, uh, I really wanted to be Teddy Campbell. Mm-hmm. But then, <laughs> I, I, oh, did, he so did. Of fact, I did. I did. Yeah. I just ran. I really, I really <laughs> wanted. I really wanted to be. To, and every and, and I I know that people know this or I've said this, but right. I like I just did everything Teddy did. Yeah. Um, you know, I whatever he was wherever he was shopping, I went and shopped there. I went and shopped at Wild Pair. Uh, you know, I went <laughs> Wild Pair the big <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, uh, I, I did that. That's but, hilarious. But and so and and um but then when when I when I got when I started playing with I, the first gig I got was Dave Hollister. I got on the Dave Hollister gig and then I got the R. Kelly gig. Well, I didn't know how to play any of that music. Mm. I had not, all I had played was church music and I played a little, I played with Ramsey Lewis for a little bit, which was almost like dinner music. Cause yeah. Ramsey was so very, very yeah, like he quiet. was, everything was soft. Yeah. So, <laughs> I, I you know what I'm saying? So, um, I didn't know how to play any of that. And that's where Rex like really like put me on. Oh, yeah. And so, uh, um, somebody recently showed me a clip 
and I said something to them that I I realized I didn't said to anyone, but um, or I never probably have, I've, I've never said. But somebody came to me about a clip with me playing with John P. Key when I got the bandana on. Oh and yeah, the, the, so the album, me and Lil Tony, uh, the Bobby Jones. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 And I, I had the bandana on, and uh, somebody was saying, "Man, I was it, like, you was playing different than I was going. Like that was me basically play like trying to play like Rex. <laughs> so mm. at a certain point, like for years, wow. like I didn't really know, and that was right. I was playing with Rob then, so I was really working on. Stage presence, hype, yeah, 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 you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And Rex was showing me Gerald Hayward. He was showing me Nissan. He was showing, but I was also, but then I was seeing him play so much because we were in the basement or he was throwing these concerts, these drum concerts, or these drum hangs, and I was watching him. Yeah. So I was just really just like, man, I'm just going to play like I'm that. I'm just going to do that. Gonna, so you're, you're, that. You're, you're, you're a blueprint. Yeah. My blue. Uh, yeah. Right. <laughs> so to a degree, I have to, you know, not to a degree, but I, I, I want to say, you know, while you're sitting there saying, you know, you're talking about how we got to give our flowers. One thing that I probably have never, I've done a poor job in publicly acknowledging just how influential you've been to me as well. And I think oh. some people probably think that, you know, when this when the story about me and you goes, they probably think I showed you everything. And that's not the truth. Because I got a gig that I didn't know anything about. I didn't know how to do that gig. I didn't know anything about playing with R. Kelly. I didn't know anything about playing R&B music. And Rex showed me everything I needed to know. Everything and it was God, weird really. because really, it's powerful man. Really, you know, I really, I mean, if, if honest, that really should have been Rex's gig. I got the gig because mm. I was just real, maybe a little bit older, but he would be the fit. But I took him down there. I remember take he went with me. I helped the, him set up the, his drums. He set up my drums that day. I introduced him to Donnie Lyle that day, but like I didn't know anything about being an R and B drummer. Yeah. But everything I did basically on that gig, I mean. As successful as I was playing that music, it was really only because of rap. Of course. You know, because oh, of how much he showed me, man. So I've done a poor job with, you know, being so vocal about that. And uh, I'm glad that I got this opportunity. So the, however millions of people see this, man, I want to thank you, you know, saying publicly oh. acknowledge how influential you were, not just to the generation behind you, you know what I'm saying, but to the generation in front of you too. But I thought it was powerful that, you know, we were – we were so young, and this is what you don't see, you know, guys. Like, you know, I remember going. I, I see. I went to go go to gigs with Teddy, you know, and help him set up. I went and watched him, you know. Um, I was wherever Teddy would be, and but you were you were next to me that same way, you know. And uh, never, man, never no hating, never no jealousy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Never nothing that you know, none of that stuff, man. I mean, we went through that, man. He took me down there, showed me how to set my kid up. Showing me the pad, you know what I'm mm. saying, and like how to get through the banks and all of that. So, man, uh, again, like I said, you know, we sitting there talking about flowers, and it's important now in this day and age we are living in with not yeah. knowing. Just never know when. You yeah, know? I would hate for, you know, to be sitting somewhere saying, you know, I, I, I hope he knows. Yeah, how much I appreciate him. I hope he knows. I, I you know, I wonder if he knows. You know, uh, yeah, but not only that, lot, man. the world should know, man. Mm. You know. You you've been a big brother. You've been a a big little brother. Right. And uh, <laughs> but man, you, you totally got me through that, man. And so, uh, just, man, just shout out to Rex oh, for, man, for, man. for helping the OG. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's crazy, bro. No, yeah. man. That means that I've never heard you talk about. That means a lot. Yeah, bro. Seriously, yeah. Like, yeah, that man. means a lot, man. Because I know people like me and Ted was talking. I don't let people mention me without me mentioning y'all. Yeah. I don't play those games. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Because I was watching this interview of Fat Joe. I forgot what show he was on. But I didn't have a problem being y'all's number two. I'm very comfortable with being number two with y'all because I know I'm a number one nigga. Yeah. We'll bleep that out. But you get what I'm saying? <laughs> and when I, what I mean by that is me standing next to y'all, helping y'all, whatever y'all need, I'll do that today. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? This yeah. Ted, he was doing, by this time, Ricky did, he was on doing New G. He was like, yo, man, we got a session. I don't have no drums to do rehearsal. Yep. I'm sure he could have got some. He's like, yo, you mind if I use your drums? What? Yep. Right. I ran them drums up. It's like, it's nothing. But as we was talking about earlier. Yeah, it was that No Limit record. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yep, y'all yeah, was rehearsing that, that Fidelity. Fidelity, right there <laughs> off set. What's that, 70 70th, 70, 71st, uh, something like that? Stoney. It's right off Stoney. Yep. But in those moments, man, it taught me 
like I told you, it was like me being around the guys I wanted to be like, if that was the way I needed to be there. And it wasn't about stealing no gig. It wasn't even about that. It was about making sure y'all was cool. Yeah. yeah. You get what I'm saying? And I think, because Calvin, me and Ted was talking about earlier, like just the generations of what, and I don't like to keep saying the younger generation, but that's the most popular generation, yeah. I guess. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. we were just talking about knowing when to give honor and not feel like, you're diminishing yourself. You get what I'm saying? So for me, I don't ever have a problem saying like, no, thank you for the accolades. Yep. These are the guys <laughs> that, because I want them to understand, like when you get to whatever level you think I'm on, yeah. I want people to be able to look at you the same way. Yeah, You know yeah. what I'm saying? So even, I mean, te- Calvin will talk about you so much because you got to think I was younger. Yeah. And Calvin was like, he was like my olive branch to the outside world because <laughs> you got he would leave and then come back to my church right, yeah. so for me he'd be like yo man i'm gonna come through i used to be like yo we got to get our set list up because calvin <laughs> coming through the- <laughs> my- man, that's another thing bro <laughs> like going to Rex- rex's church on a sunday bro like man i'm talking about and and that's man it's so crazy like i mean seeing him when you see rex now like oh you see him when i saw him playing with mary uh, the first time I went and saw him play with Mary, I mean, of course I was wild seeing him on stage. I was like, dang, this is crazy. Because I remember when he, I remember when he prayed for the gig. I remember when your mom prophesied to you about <laughs> yeah. the gig, all of that. But going to see the gig, seeing him and seeing him run it, I was just like, that that part is nothing. Yes, he's because I've been, been seeing doing. him, he's been doing that all, he's been doing that forever. <laughs> He was doing that, and he was doing it on Sunday mornings. He was doing it with Youth Edition. He was doing it with uh, 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 Kenny Lewis. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. It was just like, but uh, wow, yeah, man, it was. It was, it was he 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 had yeah. always been that be been been that, you know. Seeing him in that that element was just like, oh, that's what he does. I, it, it felt natural. Yeah, yeah. I told Teddy because uh, we were just talking about the gaps when it came to what people deem important when it comes to the industry or life, whatever. But I was saying, man, y'all to the sound y'all have, you could put y'all, I was telling behind a wall <laughs> that you cannot see through and you could play something and he could play something. It'd be like, ah, we got it. We, I told him you could put 43 drummers now <laughs> behind that wall. You'd be like, is it only one person back? Mm-hmm. So me looking at y'all and Quinn, yeah. None of y'all sound alike. Yeah. As much as you say you was, you know, emulating. Te- now, I got it because, you know, even the hopping off the seat. I carry my rock and sock seat. <laughs> no. I told Gerald the same thing. I said, bro, yeah. you got to understand everybody I influenced in Chicago is because you influenced me. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. I went to see Black Street. Black Street. <laughs> Oh That's God! Right. You say, who, who took you? Sean, Sean Cooper. Sean Cooper took him. Yeah. To see Sean Street. always got the end. Oh, like, <laughs> what? In the uh, hopping <laughs> off the drums is well, you know what did the grasshopper? I was it was just crazy. So I was like, yep. Yeah. And listen, like you, I was like, I got to be able to do that. I got to take that. I need yep. that to be a part of my R and B. You know, arsenal. Yeah. So. So, you know, it's really interesting how all of that, you know, the stuff that I learned and the stuff that influenced me and the guys that influenced me is influencing y'all. So it makes it it just with that being said, it 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 makes sense that the younger generation should give honor, you know, to the older generation because like, man, we know that you didn't just come up with that. Yeah. <laughs> the sun, man. Like a lot of what you're doing is your own style and all that you worked on and whatever. We can hear, you know, some stuff that we haven't heard and you know, mm-hmm. phrasings or whatever, however you want to call it. But like, come on, man. Like, you know, that's you sound like so and so. Yeah. I mean, so you might as well just say you listen to Chris Day. Just Dave tell the truth. You know what I mean? And we're cool. With we it. all know. <laughs> we all know. Whether you say it or not, <laughs> I'm going to. I know when someone sounds like me. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you so, hear it immediately. <laughs> so you yeah. might as well say. And I think what they got to understand me. is it has nothing to do with being praised. Because mm. that don't even really matter. Mm. It's just a matter of being able to acknowledge 
like now I can receive more because I'm giving out. Yeah. Well, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I can receive whatever I'm getting because I'm going to give y'all what the last I got. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Because for me, it's like, it's just, it never was a, I'm here with y'all. You get what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. I think that's what happens. It's like when you start looking, like Kobe, for instance, he never looked at Mike and was like, oh, we're definitely on the same level. <laughs> he was like, I want to work out with you. Like we can, whatever. Yeah. But he, there was that respect. Well, but here's, here's, here's the thing. I, just, I was just thinking about why you was talking. So while you were talking, I, the, the Lord just, I was, I'm, I got flashes of just times where y'all played and I, remember grabbing what y'all play and adding to my arsenal. Mm-hmm. Like I'm making like, you know what I mean? Like, so at the end of the day, it's like, okay, you are influencing a whole generation of R and B drummers on Mary's gig and all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> okay. I'm the guy that's playing in the house band, having to learn your entire show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. So that when Mary comes on this whatever TV show, it's got to sound like what she used yeah. to hearing every night. Yeah, right. So I'm listening to you as if like, I don't know you as if you're not my little brother. <laughs> right. Learning what you're playing. I got I got to be Rex now. Yeah. I got to be Rex. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? So like, you hear that when you hear the show back and you see me play all your stuff. Like, right. you know what I mean? Like your arrangements, everything, your setups and breakdowns, yeah. all that kind of stuff. You play, you being me. You know what I mean? Like everybody knows that. And, I, I, and, and then for you, man, I ain't, I mean, you know, I grew up playing in church and gospel. I did some records. Y'all know that me. Yeah. The world don't know that gospel, Teddy. Mm-hmm. Here I am on the Biggest gospel TV show in the world, <laughs> in the house band. Yeah. Playing all these gospel. I don't know these songs. I know these people. Yeah. <laughs> I don't right. know these songs. So 95% of that stuff <laughs> is Calvin playing. Yeah. So here I am having to be Calvin, you know, while I'm being me, to 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 to, to you know to to put forth my best effort to make these songs what they're supposed to be. So like and it's full circle even for me. It's like, man, I've, I forgot that I've had to study y'all to emulate y'all. Well, one on thing gigs. we haven't forgotten is that we study. We had to study. <laughs> <laughs> we definitely haven't forgotten man, that. I mean, I, countless hours, rehearsals. I mean, man. I mean, I was, see, I, I think, and I think about, like, the time that you were here. It's so, and man, like, drummers, the drummers that are behind me, they won't, they won't get that time that I had, man. It's no way. It's like, it's it's nothing. I can I can't tell you what happened in those new direction rehearsals. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? When you had was, to be on the list. You to man, get in rehearsals. on the list. <laughs> but I, or, or those concerts, <laughs> it was man. Like, the, God, God, man. So I mean, that those those countless hours, man. Again, the the, the with both of you guys, man. The, I'm going down the. House of Blues after Youth Edition got they had won that contest and they they had that <laughs> the big show down there House of Blues and listening to how you just put that whole thing together. Uh, coming to I remember man when I came to I was just visit I just visited this church on eighty fourth and Halsted. Mm-hmm. Is it called New Life or New Light or something like that? It's right on eighty fourth and Halsted. No, um, no. right past, or is it hosted or Vincennes? It's, I think it's, I think it's hosted. Yeah, it's hosted. But anyway, it's right down the street from where I used to live at. But I came to a concert at this church that you played at with Chicago Mass, right when the Call Them Up album came out. I came with Larry and Beerus, <laughs> and um, you were in there killing. I can go to the rock, like. That was the beginning of like Teddy Campbell for me. What year was that? <sighs> Call him up was maybe early nineties. Chicago Mass. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and it was, that, uh, it was before I was probably sixteen. Cause you, cause that was the only song you played was on Call Him Up was I Can Go to the Rock. Yeah. But the concert you played the entire concert. Right. But man, I mean. If there are two moments like that, I'm be like, man, like, where the, I, we got to find the video of 
of of the recording from Chicago Mass for uh the uh, You Love Me album. Is that it with a uh, Takeover Lord? Definitely. Oh my god! Like that's the moment that we you, talked about that. Did y'all? Yeah, mm. I was like the double bass pedal. Like never. Oh went. my god! What, that is, sounded like wind. <laughs> At one point, you, I just stopped hearing notes. I just heard wind. <laughs> <laughs> That's how fast. Because I remember this fool Calvin started using one for us. I was like, oh yeah. I was like, why? He was like, well, Teddy. Teddy. He was, I was like, okay, Teddy. got it. He's like, where in the world did Teddy. that come from? Man. I was like, man, I was out creating on the road with them plays. So I came back just playing whatever I felt. And I was like, well, that night I felt like maybe the double bass pedal will work here. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I t- do. These are the nuances, I because I I know both of y'all like a book when it comes to. Stuff. I can almost tell y'all what y'all about to play, or definitely yeah. in the area. Yeah, yeah. But dog, as slow of a song as you love me is, there's this one thing you did on that song, and people hear it in my playing now. Mm-hmm. They, there's one thing all you did was miss the one. <laughs> and. You don't mean the like he missed the one. No, like no, I don't mean the missed the one beat. as the beat. Yeah, yeah you yeah, missed yeah. the one. You came in on the two on purpose. Yeah. I think it was because you know, the group. You've been so good. God, <laughs> I said. <laughs> what is Mental, what is that? The no, I don't even know the song. The you love one. me. <laughs> you don't remember that song? No, it was the title of the song. Yeah, right? that was the single. Like it was slow. Yeah, yeah it was a you show me that. Um, um, you Percy talked uh, through the whole yep. song. Me. You oh, been so good. JJ, a straight up. That's a that's a real Chicago groove. Yeah, it Dog. is a Chicago groove. How you don't remember this? I remember when you said that's the terrible. Start singing the words. Oh yeah. Like, oh okay. Yo, but think about little things. Those are the things I. It was like. The fact that that dude didn't hit the one on purpose, it, it took the song. You know what I'm saying? So it's little things like that that would be like, I would try to figure out why you did it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, Calvin, this is the fool that really got me to start programming the way I do. Because he had all the work. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, it was just, and I was still. He's a drummer. Yeah. So it was like, again, I'm not for, I'm not into taking nobody's I'm position. So niche. I'm like, what do I need to do? Kevin Randolph was doing a lot of programming. Mm-hmm. Kyle was like, man, you program a little bit, don't you? I was like, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> He's like, I do enough to whatever. Yeah. He's like, no, nah, let's figure it. Sweet Holy Records, New yeah. G. Re- but watching him, it was like, dog, just to, because, and this is what I'll tell people. I'm Now I'm better now, for sure. But I'm great at making a song that's already put together an even greater song. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. my that's a gift of mine yeah. because all I'm doing is recreating what's there already. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, I've gotten better on that. But to see this fool, it was like I didn't understand. It was like, so you're about to come up with a beat to this song that's never been heard before. <laughs> and then he'll be going through it, and be like, okay. And to watch him do that session after session, people don't understand. Nobody is gonna get that the way I got it. Because yeah. I was there. Like I literally watched him. I was like, okay. He'll play a groove like, I think, did you tell me you got that from Steve Gillis? Yes. Man, oh, oh man. And, 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 Steve. You know, Teddy's the one that put me on Steve Oh, Gillis. you told me, yeah. Yeah, yeah I talked, yeah. Steve is at that studio. Tran, uh, Transient. Yeah. yeah I, went, I went by his place, I recorded. Uh, he got a dope, he got a dope, uh, have you man. been there? No, I just want to hear him play at the elbow room again. I, don't uh, care about I used to hear, production. see, that's the thing. Okay, but I was too young. you doing right now. Yes. I want to. That Steve, man, he could, <laughs> he could, he could still. I mean, he he still sound like Steve. I need that guy. I, yeah, he, I told, I hugged him when I saw him at the studio. <laughs> I said, "Give me a." I say, man, you don't I was know, like, man. dog. You're, a, you're one of my idols because yes, of my. Cause my <laughs> yeah, I was that, like, that, yeah, that okay. Hey, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just tell you a story, man. Where I felt really kind of low key intimidated until I actually sat. It's actually until I actually got to the studio and started being me is when I had to do Israel's record. You did, uh, with Seas or something, Monday? right? Yeah. Yeah. 
uh, reality. And I felt a little intimidated because I was like, whatever that, whatever that record you played, so it's a power of one. Oh, yeah. It's a record you did. Yeah. One of them songs you played, you came up, because this is what you do to Rex's, you know, to add to Rex's story, how you come up with these beats, these these patterns. Mm -hmm. From nowhere. And I'm like, whatever this, I can't remember the song, because, you know, Y'all already know I'd be forgetting yeah, stuff. Yeah, a million songs. <laughs> but whatever the song was on that Power One record, and you know it too, whatever that groove is you play, you know, what's the song? It's a groove you played on one of them songs that's like, it's is not it, normal. But it's, oh, is it the uh, Everywhere I Go song? Yeah. Yeah, that song. So now I'm like, okay, we're getting ready to do one of those <laughs> studio records for Israel so they gonna right. definitely be, be looking they already got what's my man Dan Needham they got Dan Needham oh yeah yeah so he gonna be Dan I guess I'm supposed to be Calvin no, <laughs> no. so my already in my up. mind already in my mind I'm like oh I ain't never gonna be able to come up with no beats like that man please <laughs> so I'm, I'm telling you I went in kinda like man I hope they like me me you I, talked before you went over there yeah I was like I, I, I hope because cause like I felt like I'm just gonna be honest. You might as well just let me play the whole record because I can be, I can give you a Dan. Mm. That's what I do for a living. Mm. I mean, I ain't him, so you yeah. going I can't be him, but I can give you that feeling. Yeah. So, and I can give you the gospel thing. So, if you got me playing the whole thing, you're gonna get the best of, I yeah. think, both worlds. Mm. But if you got me coming in just to be this guy, I'm probably gonna miss the mark because I'm not. That guy, I'm I'm this guy. I'm a guy. Yeah, no, I'm I'm, I'm, the, I'm the I'm the I'm the I can give you all that. Yeah, and even this was like, man, we probably should have just played the whole record because I could give you all of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, but I, the but the but the but that but you, I'm telling you, bro. I, I mean, was I, scared. I say, I was well, kind of scared. Sure I first of all, that's, before you went over, let, 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 me, <laughs> let, let me let me say this first of all, and I'm not Dan Needham. Is one of the musicians, one of the drummers. I, I like. I really, I really like him. Yeah, I love dope. his playing. Yeah. He's a he's an intelligent player. Yeah. Um. I, I I've I've listened to his drum tones. They're immaculate. I mean, all that. He's perfect. He's great. And so in saying that, I I say with all the respect in me, and I I mean this with no offense. Like I don't, you don't bring Teddy Campbell in and have him play six songs on your album. <laughs> like well, I agree, I, they should have had. I'm like, man, yeah. why y'all just don't have Teddy? But I know what Israel does. I know what Israel does, what and, I, and I and I actually felt that too. I was kind of like, man, I, I wish I could. And, and the reason why I said that not because I'm Teddy Campbell, I should be doing a whole record. I was like, the songs that Dan is probably going to play, or the songs they, I, I, that I knew he was going to play. I was <laughs> I like, know what you said. when he did, when they did that Sting stuff, and Dan oh, yeah. played it, I was like, man, I That's need to be same. playing that. <laughs> like, I'm not saying that he he yeah. killed it, but I'm saying yeah. I can. You got yeah. me here. You might as well really yep. maximize me being here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I felt like they kind of missed. Me being all the way me, but I'm glad I was able to. Because what's the one song that people that be talking about now still this, that I played on that record? Uh, it's like that's the blueprint. That's Israel sound yes. now, and I'm like, what? Yes. I remember that. What's the? Uh, um, uh, no, I can't I'm remember. terrible with names. It's the it's the, it's the big no ballad names. of his. Uh, uh, the, is at the center? Uh, is it, wait, wait, wait. Never ain't come me. Never let go. Mm-hmm. Uh, right, that's yes. the one. Yes. So. What's that was a great. That, that was a great. I was able to be expressive and original and do what I do or mm-hmm. whatever, and I was really grateful for that because, again, you had me. You had me very nervous. <laughs> that's, that is uh, <laughs> that. That's that's very funny. That's very funny. Wait, do y'all know? Just let me ask this: Is there any other musician, not just drummer, that? Artists start off the song saying their names besides you. <laughs> <laughs> no. Hi, Cal. Hi, Cal. Like, you ready, Cal? No, I remember. Matter that's of fact, two people. That's John and James. <laughs> oh, John. Uh, and no, Fred. no, James Fortune. Oh, James too. That's three people. That's three <laughs> mega me? gospel icons <laughs> calling you your world. name out. You your world. That's yeah. You yeah. said what? I was trying to remember the name of that song. Oh, that That was going to kill you. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to wear him out. (laughs) Yeah. But yeah, that's, no, that's, but I get why you're saying that. It's like, coming behind you on, because you, 
You're not recreating anything. You can't recreate that, bro. You're the creation. Yeah. And then it goes from... No, seriously, like... I have to be me. I can't be... People don't no understand. Do That's that. not easy. It's and, and, this, and this is what I'll say. This is going to be great. People going to be like, man, they just all in that. They need to just go ahead and kiss each other. <laughs> but... Doing what I do, it's it's not easy, but it's... Like Rex came in and really killed, he, like he was like he did it. He he really did it, you know what I mean? And so, because I feel like you know, it's easier if you know for you can kind of be a chameleon. You kind of go from here to there and all this, whatever. But to you know, be a jack of all trades, right? It's kind of like the jack of all trades, master of none thing. <clears throat> and I, I and I'm I'm I maybe I maybe I, that may be me. Jack of all trades, master of none. What we, hold on. But <laughs> hold on, hold on. Are we telling? Yeah, I'm, I'm about to give you the. Uh, do you hear what you're saying? Bro? I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm about to hit you with the. I Kevin understand Hart. that. Turn I'm, Teddy up in his way. <laughs> I understand that. I understand that. I don't know. I, I, I don't. I, I'm a jack of all trades. I don't. I can't say that I'm a master of. I've, I'm a mass. I'll call myself a master drummer. I'm still evolving and growing, right? But I'll call myself a master. But there's like a certain like kind of mm, that you. That's you, right? Yeah. I don't know. I don't have that. I, to me, I don't think I have that. But to you, to you, and even to you, there's this one thing that y'all like got that can't nobody, nobody can do. Yeah, we got it from you though. Well, <laughs> yeah, I don't know you what just decided about. to play everything. Yeah. <laughs> you, we got a, it from. We got it from you. You, if you're a master at playing everything, that like music is a genre. You get what I'm saying? Like, mm. you got gospel, you got R&B, you got hip-hop. But music is, you're a master at playing music. First of all. There's not a lot of people that do that. Yeah, well, I feel, let's, let's, I'm let's, just saying, let's, it seemed me, like it was harder to I be. Got, I, I want to make two points. First of all, <laughs> my drumming is basically built around two licks, all right? One of them is the paradiddle diddle. <laughs> the other lick is the Teddy Campbell lick. That, that my drumming is built around That's hilarious. that those two licks. I don't licks. Even know what that is. I That's the lick that you have that. played your entire <laughs> lifetime. That oh yeah, we know it. Too. You know exactly what I'm playing. Maybe I'm doing it wrong because I anyway. on the drums. On I the drums, yeah. Know what it is. But it's a my drumming is really literally built around two licks. Like any feels <laughs> I'm playing is built around a paradiddle diddle or that Teddy Campbell lick, which yeah. people know have asked me, like, what is the Teddy Campbell lick? I can't really say to them it's a triplet. It's right. a but anyway, that's the first thing. The second thing is that you're saying that uh, you know, you were you can't say that you're a master of anything in Jack of all trades. Do you you do know that all those T V shows you do you make it hard for each and one of those drummers, each one of those artists to go back to their regular drummer. And like, that's the only artist that drummer's playing for. Yeah. Like, like, man. I, I think I'm trying to create what, they, what they're what used to. Yeah, no, 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 no. as Teddy, though. As Teddy. You though. don't play anything as anybody else. You never do. You get what I'm saying? Right. So that's what I'm saying. Like, you are that person to where you take what somebody may have played or may have done and it immediately turns into a Teddy thing. I mean, that's not easy, bro. I mean, I intentionally do that. I don't. I ain't trying to be you. I'm just learning. No, that's what you. I'm saying. Yeah, but most sure. people can't right. just. Most people can't not try to be you. Ah. you get what I'm saying. Like I know most the people, generation they, is hard for them to. Yeah, they just mimic. They just take it. Verbatim. It's a lot of yeah. So that's that is definitely true. Yeah, a lot of guys now just. It just it's just copy and paste. Yes, copy and paste. And one thing Teddy was just so adamant with me about is like, not only did he say to me because you got to think about it, like it would have it's real flattering for a guy to want to be like you. Yeah. Oh yeah. But Absolutely. Teddy was very adamant when I was young, like bro, it, it's cool. I but but man, don't stop trying to play like me. Stop, <laughs> Do don't, you? Not, like no. Yeah. And and he said it to me a number of times. You know what I'm saying? Not just about him, about other drummers because he was very, very, very intentional. In, intentional about making sure I found my voice. Right. You know, and so. That's why I cried like a baby when you came to LA and played at Faithful Central with John. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He told. I was sitting uh -huh. back there. I was behind. I was crying. He like, told you, me like about you had, that. Like, I he wanted, was so like stretched out in front of the church. I, I wanted. Crying. I wanted so bad. <laughs> I, that night, I just, I, I wanted so bad for Teddy to just be like, I wanted him to have his chest you stuck out. You were proud of you. I wanted, that's all I would like. I didn't know I, that that's what you wanted. Man, that's. You got it times 10. Man, I was just like, Woo! 
I was just like, <laughs> that, man, that whole that whole that whole trip was about me just being. I'm like, man, I want to get to LA. I want Teddy to hear me, and I want him to be like, I want it. Like a, I wanted him to look at be like a father look at their yeah, son. Yeah, that's <laughs> how you know I what I'm saying. Felt. I that's want him I to felt. be like, man, that's my boy. That's how I <laughs> felt, <my> bro. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh. I'm man, like, man, you, you did it. <laughs> you did it. Hey, it's not like I'm you. So Nobody pro- else can do that. You, that's hey, so you're, the, you're the class by yourself. When I went to see Rex at Airy Crown with I the Burgundy, with the yeah. Burgundy DW, 2008. <sighs> Man, bro, you talking about a energy and a force that was like from beginning to end. I was just sitting up there like, I can't believe wow. this. Like, wow. because you because you see, I, I I mean, I saw Rex. I saw him. I saw him do everything he could for that. Yeah, I saw every, I saw him go through all of the steps. I saw him work hard. I saw him. I saw him in the gym. I saw him behind the kit. I saw him making sure his programming was sweet. I saw him working on his drum setups. I saw him wow. working on just being all of those things. You know what I'm saying? I saw him studying Mary's previous drummers and making sure that he brought a whole new thing to that. And and Gerald Hayward is a is 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 my big brother. Is oh, a, yeah. He's one of my big brothers. And he commanded that gig so well. So it was that was hard to it's do. Hard to do. Because people yeah. uh, because, it's hard to do. Because people not only they associated Mary with her drummer. Yeah. So many people like, but man, when I tell you that night, that me and that entire audience was like, <laughs> whoa. And I mean from the first from the fir- first of all, and was Kyle was mixing you that night. Definitely. Woo! You hear everything. You hear you, you hear you oh, breathing yeah. on He the had night. he had uh <sighs> mics on my splashes. <laughs> As he should. <laughs> yeah, oh, for sure. But that wasn't normal. Man. And, and oh, so, yeah, yeah. Be nice. So when Rex, by the time Rex got to the to the stand-up kit part, part <laughs> man, I was screaming like a woman in there. I was with my I was with my ex. We was at the show. I was I was like, Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> I was going crazy. I'm, t- I'm grabbing yo, her. Like, yo, they like, I'm, wait, why I'm is he so you, bro, high? Man, I'm telling you, man. I walked I, past. I, I, I remember. I, I agree. I, I remember agree. after the show, all I came, I walked in the hallway. I went backstage. I was, I walked past all of the homies. I ain't say nothing to no <laughs> yeah. I had to go back and apologize. Like, man, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to blow past yeah. it. Boggs was walking like, Calv, Calv. I'm like, Rex. Like, <laughs> Dog, what? Man. He was like, But I had, this, I had the same, like that same feeling. Not like, not like something like I did this. I had that feeling like, man, bro, you you did it. For yeah. you, like, man, that you was... did it. Well, to your point, and and this is just to let you guys know how important how how what Calvin is saying is 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 true as as especially as it pertains to Mary. Um, and I'll just be very quick on this story. My Mary story wasn't like that. When I came in to Mary and, you know, Kern had promised me this gig, I got to this gig, quit my gig to get to this gig, got to the gig, <laughs> Mary hated me. Mm. She walked in every day, was like, Gerald, is that you? That ain't Gerald. <laughs> Gerald, Gerald. That ain't Gerald. She like, he hated me, right? <clears throat> they was trying to get me to dress like Gerald. They was trying to get me, them, them, they was Val and Kern was trying to change me in a, you know, man, you lay here looking like Donnie Hathaway. You got to put some pants, <laughs> oh, cut some pants in the, your boots. I mean, it was so, hat on. yeah, it was, it was toe up, man. I was, I, and I was like, I, I thought I did okay. I felt like I did cool if they were open to a different sound. I felt like it could have worked. It was horrible. It was horrible. So they ended up having an audition while I was there. And I went to, I went over, they took me over to another rehearsal to hear another drummer. And y'all know this story. Some of Mm -hmm. y'all know the story. And um, I went to an Aaron Hall rehearsal. And of course, Big Mike was there. And when I heard Big Mike play and Kern yelled out, man, do that lick you did. I'm like, you you know him like this? <laughs> <laughs> this so is Mike did his lick. I was like, he got my gig. <laughs> sure enough, he was on the gig because wow. he was like, he was, he was, he was, he was, he was, he was Gerald. He was yeah. little Gerald. He was yeah, baby yeah. Gerald. He was nobody could do that, right? Mm-hmm. So he forced he got out there and he killed the gig. But there was something different about it when you got to the gig. There was yeah. something different about it when you got to the gig. You literally, what I wanted to do, what I thought I could have done with changing it and bringing it to, all right, you know, because Gerald, you can't recreate Gerald no. yeah, unless no. you really study him and want to be him. And I feel like that's 
had to be what Mike did. Because yeah. for him to be able to do what Gerald did, it's like, it's, I don't know. That's yeah, almost yeah, impossible. Was, <laughs> right? Was, so he did it. And so it was fine. So Mary still had her, her fix, her mm-hmm. Gerald fix, what she knew and what yeah. she was used to. But when you came, you know, it took, it took a turn and it, and it became something else. But what it became, it still was that energy that she was used to, that drive she was used to that came from the drums. It was still that, but different. And I it was had, like, it was that, it was that Teddy Campbell Southside Chicago. Oh, I don't know, bro. I That's what know. it was. Well, Teddy Campbell from Southside that, Chicago did not it was, get the gig. No. <laughs> <laughs> so it was something but else. It was, no, it was no. Clearly Ted, something else. It is just what you said. Your focus wasn't a specific genre. My focus was R and B. Yeah. So you couldn't even focus on playing for her because you had other stuff you need to do. You get what I'm saying? My fo- I was playing for Mary when I was playing drums with my grandma yep. yeah Mary just wasn't there yeah so I guess that makes sense man well really you just gave me a, a revelation Frankie Beverly was right he didn't like my <laughs> Frankie Beverly did he stopped liking my plan after a while <laughs> he said you've been playing for too many other people uh, so when you come to Maze it, it ain't Maze no more you ain't playing my music I'm like really? Frankie I'm playing with people like Aretha <laughs> Patti LaBelle Luther Vandross, these are your peers. I'm on the BET celebration. He was like, it ain't Maze music, though. <laughs> so but, to your point, I was like, maybe I did start sucking on his gig because I was no, playing with too many other people. Yeah, but you're... But that's so I get it. I, get and it. I don't mean, no, no, I didn't no, say you, you suck. You, you, you no, definitely. I'm just saying, but it, may, it makes but sense now. But if you're, like we said earlier, if you got a basketball player who's just amazing at hitting buzzer beaters, like that's all he goes over, <laughs> oh, that's all he practices... I don't need you the rest of the game. Mm-hmm. You don't even have to get there to the end of the fourth quarter if I need you then. You get yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So if our, Calvin told me at the age of like eight or nine, he was eight or nine, he was like, dog, I want to cut records for a living. Mm-hmm. Ooh, eight or nine? Man. Am I lying? No. I, I was like, why? <laughs> Did you? I, I lied to you now. I no. was like, why? Because this was true story. Being this fool, because we stayed in different places, we would turn on the record player mm-hmm. and I would put the phone down and I would play with yep. the record. Yep. He'd listen when that song is over, he'd put the phone yep. down and he'd play with. So that's how it was a whole different thing. But it's like, I don't know. Like, I don't even know how to explain it. It's like in that time, like learning the way we was learning, mm-hmm. it was different. Yeah. I, for mm. one, I I just I completely fell in love with the feeling I had when I when I heard until I found the Lord. Ooh, I was like nah, that. Yeah. That's that's really what did it. When the feeling, whatever I felt, I was like, I want somebody to, to be a thousand miles away from me and be, and have that feeling. I that's that's yeah. and that's and the only way I knew to do that was to to be able to do records. Um, Teddy, your your but but your oh you always had such a like you were. Always in the moment, but you were always also still like, like I'm doing this, but I got my sights on something way bigger anyway. Like you were doing the plays, but you was out with Dakota Moon opening for Tina Turner. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? Like so, like you were, you were doing, you were doing the the what was the what was that TV show? The what was that first TV show? The uh, Motown, Motown Live. Motown Live. With the gold DW snare <laughs> that I've seen, I know he remembers that I remember. I went and bought that I same remember. drum after I saw you with it at the gospel I fest. I played that drum for a long time. You, I went, I gave it to Little <laughs> Gerald Gray, I, but I bought that drum after I saw you with it at the gospel fest. You played with Men of Standard at the, on the small stage. I <laughs> and wore them drums out, and I went and found a used one at Midwest Percussion the very oh, next yeah, week. Definitely, but you, it's like you were doing. You were doing Motown Live, but you had your eyes set on like the bigger picture. You was like thinking like Frankie Beverly or Britney or Britney Spears. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Or 98 Degrees. You know what I'm saying? Um, mm. So I mean, I think you know for you saying you know, man, uh, Frankie saying, man, you don't you don't you don't come back. I think you've always because one thing we talk about. A lot of times you always talking to yeah you but you yeah. always listening to a lot of music. Yeah, you know you ask Teddy like man okay like 
how can I become better? Teddy's going to tell you, listen to a bunch of music. <laughs> That's what we I just, <laughs> he told me that in 2000. He was like, man, you sound great on Mary stuff. He said, you need to listen to some more music. I was like, yeah. Teddy's going to, because for Teddy, for Thanks. him, yeah, right. because, because, because for Teddy, that's him. And for Teddy, it's like, man, you want to be a great drummer, bro, broaden, broaden your ears, open yeah. your ears up mm -hmm. for him. Remember, we, and like, you're going to tell like, and, and that's how he's going to tell you to become a better drummer. Yeah. Every person he can tell you. That's man, listen, true. Man. That's all I you, tell you. you. You scroll through Teddy's iPad or his iPod or his playlist on his iPhone. You see what he, it's, it's it's a million different genres. Right? Yeah, you Facts. know what I'm saying. So he's gonna he's gonna tell you that he's gonna tell you, man. You broaden your ears up. You gotta listen to some. And that's and that's and it's interesting because I remember hearing a story. I don't know if it's true. I mean, if Dennis ever watches this, uh, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, Somebody said that, you know, Dennis's way of practicing sometimes was just, you know, he'd be smoking a cigarette and just listening to music. He wouldn't even play. He would just sit back and just listen. And when I heard that, I was like, well, that makes sense because a lot of times I I wouldn't play. I would just listen to music. And then I'd get on a gig and have to play some jazz or some Afro, some Brazilian stuff or whatever. Not and, coming and, out. and it'd be coming out. Channel it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that so I was like, well, that's probably what it is. Yeah. <clears throat> so I knew that that was a a, 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 um, a very big reason why I was able to, you know, bounce in, bounce around these different genres. Like, yeah. yeah, I didn't I didn't I didn't grow up playing Brazilian music, but I'll hear something I'm playing. I'm like, man, that, that sound yeah, that sound like that was uh, close to that sound like close to it, yeah. right? You know what I mean? But I'm I'm listening to that stuff. Yeah, you know. And so, um, so that I'm definitely telling everybody that because even if you don't aspire to play all these different genres of music, it's going to make the genre of music that you love to play. It's going to make that even more exciting. If yeah. you have stuff to pull from. Absolutely. Rex, I, I want to ask you, like, you got a, is there like a, a moment, like a Teddy Camel moment that's like implanted in your head? Like where like life changing? Yeah. Or, or like. Or like you like man, it's just like that. Like that was the moment where you was like, oh my god! Like it was a wild moment. Like uh, uh, there was a few, a few. Um, I think it was what one we were just talking about the BET Awards. Like because then it became a time where we were on. I was coming in to play with Mary mm -hmm. or something. But I'll just go back before that. I just told him he's one of the guys I actually traveled to Milwaukee. To I see did. him play with the I Backstreet did. Boys, I and I did too. Me, I think me and Rick Robinson went to Milwaukee. Did you? Me and Rick Robinson went to Milwaukee mm -hmm. to see you with Backstreet yeah. Boys. Was the Backstreet Boys <clears throat> or Ninety Eight Degrees? I saw oh, him with the Backstreet Boys. I don't think I saw him with. Matter of fact, it was me, Sean, and Tina. We yeah. was sitting in the back. I didn't see you with Backstreet guy. Boys. I saw you with Ninety Eight Degrees. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I didn't see him live with them. Yeah, I, I drove to Milwaukee. Oh, okay. For Ninety Eight Degrees, but this fool. So <laughs> I get to the arena, right? First of all, it's an arena. An arena. I was like, he was like, yeah, just come around to the dock area. Yep. I was like, yeah, that's the back. Okay. <laughs> and then I'm he walked the back. He walked me in and to see. So he's like, yo, man, come see the stage. Yeah. But they were under the stage starting off. Mm -hmm. And he was like, no, sit down, man. Calvin, I don't. I don't even remember how old I was. I was just, but I felt like I was four. Because yeah. <laughs> I'm sick. It's this big. It's a massive yeah. kit. I mean, humongous. Like the rack was made by the by the by the the, the people who made the stage. Was that um? It was was that it was, the blue Yamaha kit? It was blue and the rack that they made. It was, like it was Gibraltar pieces, but they had to <laughs> yep. make it because it was so like mm -hmm. I don't know what it was. It was, it was over the top, dog. And I'm just sitting there, and he was like, "Yo." So go back there. We about to get ready. Yeah. You know, he was like, but do me a favor. Uh, Sean, and I'm going to tell you, he's like, when they shut the lights off, it's going to be really loud. <laughs> and I was like, okay, you know, whatever. Calvin, those lights shut off. That show started. I was like. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Tina was laughing because I was in awe. Yeah. Then the stage started coming up. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's like you had a, a extra hydraulic. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of extra. Because you saw him before yeah. you saw the stage. Sean was like, you look cool, don't he? I was like, <laughs> that was one like, y'all not Y'all not bothered? <laughs> Dog, I was blown away. Yeah. Because you, first of all, we're in an arena. And I'm like, this dude I've looked up to, like, that was just one of the moments, like, that was one of the moments, like, this is what I want to do. Because mm -hmm. I definitely hadn't gotten to that point yet. Yeah. But it's like, but then to still have that connection, you yeah. know what I'm saying, with that person, it's like, okay, this is what I want to do, like, following in y'all footsteps. But then I guess another one is to see when we did the BET Awards and to see how he was going through music. Going through that music. And I'm just looking at him. I'm shaking. I'm not even on his gig. I'm just nervous. Like, Ricky had called out a song. Teddy, like, all right, two, mm -hmm. three. I was like, oh, read. <laughs> <laughs> but it, because for me, in that moment, it was like, okay, this may be possible. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, like, those I'm are the, huh? Like, I'm here. Yeah, <laughs> I'm here. It's like this is one of those moments where it's like, wow, like this dude is really next up. This ain't just drums. This is, okay, we got a five, a five-minute break. <laughs> you back in four. Yeah. yeah. Those are the things you look at like, oh, wow, okay, yeah, I'm not professional at all. <laughs> I'm yeah. definitely coming back in seven. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I think I'm early. I'm good. But those I are take 10. Yes, yeah, but it's like to see y'all in those elements outside of Chicago. That's really what turned, because I was so close with y'all, but to see y'all in those moments, it's like, okay. Yeah, that's, those was wild seeing you playing with Gerald Levert on Motown Live. <laughs> you had the double bass. <laughs> you was, I was like, man. I was like, this is what it is. So, yeah, I, I got have, crazy wild moments. I have one, I, I got one moment for each of y'all where I was just like, whoa. BT Silver Anniversary. Yeah, you tell me about that one. I, I, I've said that to you before. I think. Yeah. Man, the new kids on the block set. I'm not not new kids on the New edition. Yeah. The new edition. That's crazy because little Mike Reed said the same thing. He was like, man. That Mitchell, is. I'm sorry. No, Reed. He that's said, the same show I'm talking about. That's the one you're talking about? Absolutely. Where he, he was played, like, with, I watch he played, with, played with Ty Tribbett and he played with New and he played with New Edition and it you was like something about LL too. Yeah. Oh God. Is he on yeah. that show? Yes, he was. Head sprung. Teddy oh, had on yeah. a suit, bro. <laughs> suit button up. Sounded like a, a hood. <laughs> on, on, bro, <laughs> on, on, you on the hydraulic like you from the hood. Oh yeah. <laughs> on the hydraulic. I'm like, he ain't gonna right. Oh yeah. Why that dude got a suit? They was though? like, is he I'm miming? Wedding band. <laughs> bro, yeah, they was like, he's miming. You was wearing head sprung. Oh house. yeah, I remember that. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> But those were some days, actually, I understand now when y'all would be saying, like Aaron would say, you know, he he was going all crazy on that Usher gig because he was saying he had something to prove. Mm. I remember on those shows playing those different styles of music. I did low-key, definitely low-key have the the thoughts of wanting to prove that I was like, I could play this stuff and, be, and it could be real. It could be authentic. Yep. I it was like, feel it. I not like, like a, I'm not, it was like, listen, here. I can like, be I'm nice. Not a wedding and, band. I, I can be nice and polite. Teddy. If you like, I can, be, I, I am Teddy to get the Oscars <laughs> and I've been to the white house, but I will Throw some Timberlands on with this suit. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> well, did, and wear this Oh, suit. absolutely. Put these Timberlands in your behind. I, yes. I had a... Because you were saying what you said was that Chris Colbert uh, uh, responded to. He was like, you know, it was like I, the, the Teddy with the... They always tried to... They always playing like he had a chip on his show. Chip on his show. It was show. a gospel celebration. It Wait. was a gospel celebration, too. Yeah, I was I like, that okay. That, one, that year, Fred was on there that Fred, year. Fred, Definitely. Like, Y'all did that medley. Chip on my shoulder. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're a big chip. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, but I knew what time. Chip. I, was like, yeah. Yeah. So I was like, I was like, yeah. I don't know what chip I'm it was. Calvin's I was like, big brother. <laughs> yeah. Y'all just make sure. I know y'all love Calvin. The year. I'm yeah, Calvin no, big. that's your. <laughs> <laughs> the year that you did the Grammys with Mary. Oh. You yeah. didn't have your drums. Yeah. Did you play Teddy's drums? 
No, I had my drums had with drums. Ron Fair. If that was the Grammys, yeah. I had my... Uh, no, no the yeah. The drums? That was probably... Well, I did the Grammys, what, twice, maybe? This was the first time you did the Grammys. This was the oh. very first year you did the Grammys. Maybe I didn't. But I know if this is the year Ron Fair uh, did, yeah, I had my kit. Because we was about to tour. Okay. Mm. Yeah. He played my drums on the Grammys one time? I feel no. Like- He's talking about the same show we talking about, the 25th. Was that what that was? The same show we've been, uh, when Method Man came out with us, I was playing Teddy's drum. That was, okay. We played the house band's gear. Okay. That was, yeah. the, okay, well, I'm talking, what I'm talking about is the Grammys. Oh, okay. What song did y'all play that year? We did Be Without You, but we did it the regular way into like an orchestral thing. Okay. And then she went into, I don't know if that was Janis Joplin or I forgot whose song it was, but it was like a mesh. Did you song. do No More Drama on, on uh, the Grammys? Oh, uh, no, no more drama was on the BET Awards. Okay, well then that's the show I'm yep. talking about. BET Awards. Yeah, that's the show I'm talking <laughs> about. Sure. I thought it was. I, I thought it was the. It's Grammys. the same show. Yeah. What? That's the same show. The yeah, sh- the same show. We did a medley. So was it that show that I was playing for New Edition and all of them? You was playing with Mario. Yeah, that's the one you told me I dented your drums. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was like, he was like, man, you sound good. He was like, but look at these heads. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "I've been playing here all day." They was dev. I'm sure they was. You were not the first one. Though. Nice. Well, and I'm sure. Sloppy. I was so mad. I, I couldn't be as oh, mad. You told at me about you. I know who you about to my say, little brother. But I'm Gerard. I knew you was about to say him, Gerard Barnes. Oh, really? One of my. I'm talking like one of my <laughs> dude. Oh, I'm more married because of Gerard. This oh, I dude. did marry because of Gerard. Yeah, beat up my drum so bad, Man. I almost cried. I literally really almost cried that day. Shout he was out with to Gerard Cisco? Barnes. Yeah. <laughs> Gerard Barnes. Yeah, I almost my... cried that day. Man. He played, he came and played either with Cisco or Drew Hills, probably Cisco. <laughs> and man. See your drums had Rex no was, tone when you I got, got up. back up to the drums and it was like bloop, bloop. I was like And Rex was Rex had <laughs> he's I'm sure you still got all those videotapes, all that oh, stuff. Oh yeah. Definitely. Man, remember the the the, the one with Nissan playing with Aaliyah outside on like what? Uh, on the that? lake? On the lake. <laughs> I had just told Teddy, I said, when I was oh, rocking with people, I would make them come to my house and watch those videotapes. Yeah, yes. And I had like a stack of them. Yeah. Because like, I didn't know what R&B, like, that's, that's what I'm saying. <clears throat> and that's to, to the point I'm making. Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't know what R&B feels were. I didn't know what the kind of feels I was supposed to play on R&B. Uh, so yeah. he was really putting me up on like Nissan. He was like, man, just look how you just throw that floor tom in there. You, you know, know that's yeah. right there. Yeah. Yeah. Teddy, yeah. Yeah. that joint. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I put that in everything. Yeah, 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 the yeah. simplest feel yeah. ever, mm-hmm. but it'll change because those songs don't cause for a lot. Yeah, so you gotta find that you little drop a little something. It's like, oh, mm-hmm. you be like, oh, I didn't produce that. Of yeah. course you did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I yep. remember. I remember, man, Nissan. I remember the story. Nissan had me come playing for Diddy, right? Subbing for him. <laughs> Nissan, we in that rehearsal, man. And Diddy is not happy with me. Because I'm trying you to... When you did Jay Leno? I, maybe it was. I got it on VHS. <laughs> I think it was. <laughs> yeah. So Diddy's not happy with me. And I'm... Because I'm trying to... I don't know, man. I'm just... I ain't trying to be out here going crazy and blazing all over. But I'm trying to play the music the way I feel like it. You know, I'm trying to be it's respectful bit, to yeah. it. I guess... I ain't got to do all that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So uh, Diddy wasn't happy. He went and told Nissan, whatever he told Nissan, Nissan came to me and was like, I need to, I need to be T Teddy. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, okay. So I just, <laughs> My bad. <laughs> My bad. Why did you just say that? <laughs> right. <laughs> then he was like, yeah, like that, just a little bit less. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. I definitely got that on tape, bro. No lie. Oh my God, bro. Yeah, I got that on tape. This fool Calvin, man, when that dude, it, well, the one thing was he had a gig here with John at Christ Universal. It was just like, so, and that's oh, what I said. Was that, that was. That Tony was like, wasn't even on the gig then. That's Maurice. That was Maurice. Oh, Kevin. That, was, that was Kevin Randolph's first gig. Sure yeah. was. Yeah. That was Kevin I mean, Randolph's talk- first gig. Bro. It was on a Sunday. I'll never forget it. Because mm-hmm. he let me, I had his snare the whole day. So that's <laughs> what I'm saying. People don't understand, like, yeah. humble yourself. Relax. 
Like, it's okay. Yeah. Like, I knew he was like, yo, I got to be at Christ Universal, whatever, whatever. I'm like, man, yo, I was like, people was like, yo, Rex, what you about to do? We got a gig. <laughs> <laughs> we got a gig. Christ 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 Christ. They like, who playing there? Well, I'm not playing, but I got to be there. Yeah. But, like, I'm carrying this snare, bro, whatever you need, helping them set up. And then to see, Rain on us seemed like it didn't stop that night. <laughs> John just like it wasn't no they weren't playing Chicago. to sequences yeah it yeah. wasn't no let's come out John was like no just go oh man and I was sitting there like I never heard the same thing twice yeah man but this is coming from a guy who I grew up with him right. so know, I I'm, knew what he played but I'm like know what he could do it's, yeah, I don't know what, who this guy is. what year did you learn you <laughs> know what I'm saying <laughs> <laughs> that was a moment man where I was like yo man this is because the whole room was focused on him yeah. You know what I'm saying, yeah. and it was that was a that was a wild moment for me, bro. Even for I don't you, even, like, man. I'll, I'll say that moment for me with you was at, at Faithful Central yeah. was the moment. But <clears throat> you know, man, it was just so many times where you, I would hear you know you play and and be listening to the radio or some record that I'm listening to that I know you on, and then hear all this stuff come from it, and be like, man, like how are you able to? pull that off and like what were you thinking and you know what I mean like it would be like really you know to me it would be almost frustrating because I can't play that you know what I mean sit down trying to play it it was like now he's got me trying to you know I'm the left side of my brain yeah. it's like I'm playing Afro-Cuban music or something and it's gospel <laughs> it's not supposed to be this hard you know what I mean it's exactly. like so like that's the kind of stuff that I would have that happened with you all the time like all the time all the time it wasn't just like one isolated thing it was like all the time it was like man let's do this man like he, you gotta stop changing the game this much because I like <laughs> no. we we can't keep we can't keep up with that like that's yeah, really how I feel you control the like, narrative it's like man you gotta stop bro like you really getting out of hand oh. you know I was like it's really Getting out of hand at this point. Really like, you're having too much fun at this point. Because <laughs> you, know, you know we can't keep up. You know yeah. we're not going to be able to play that. So, uh, you know, uh, one thing that happened recently is that that Marvin, that whatever that ride pattern you played came back across the world mm. and people was posting or whatever. And uh, <laughs> it was just like, it's 20 years later that we still talking about this. <laughs> and people were like, just, you know, like the younger generation now was like, like dissecting this mm. thing, right? And it was like messing them up, you know? And I was just like, that's crazy for it to resurface to this younger generation, be trying to play this or whatever. And now, you know, and, and, and now they that they get to understand what it's like for us Absolutely. to be frustrated with this dude and think, oh, you think you can play that? Oh, you think you fresh? You think, okay, now play this. It's like, man, I can't play that. I'm not, I'm, I can't play that. So like that is so many moments, but I, and like I was telling him when we did our, you know, we're talking about you know a lot of stuff that he's accomplished, and what was so powerful for me is when after he had filled in for me and stuff, I got back to the gig. It was actually to the Tonight Show when when this happened. But I got back to the gig, and and all the guys was like, man, out of everybody that's come through here, everybody that's sub for you, everybody's played for you. It's like yeah. we like Rex the best. Yeah, he's the best one. I, that always best happens. One. He's the best <laughs> one. That always you, man. I mean, you told me something years ago. You was like, man, if you sub out of a gig, be prepared to lose it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and really? Nothing is more true. That I mean, that statement could never be more true than sending Rexel to fill in for you. Yeah. Like I haven't had Rex to sub for me in it's been years, but he subbed the Isley gig and they gotta was, be ready to lose that. Man. Yeah. Man, like please. they were they were like a R and B gig? You gonna have you gonna send Rex in? Yeah, bro. You need to go on. No, but like, don't like, give like, me that. I I, I would have been cool if I'd have been like, yeah, go sub for sap. Yeah, man. They was like, <laughs> Rob, Rob was like, oh, yeah, that, that young man. So, so where's he from? Yeah. Hey, you brother. Questions relax. About yeah. Hey, don't he's worry. He's busy. Yeah. yeah. He's yeah. taking. Hey, he's don't, worry about it. don't worry about it. No, but that's. He want to be at home with his family. <laughs> but, yo, man, if I'm, and this is straight up, like, my respect for y'all makes me play those positions. Man. I don't play y'all's gig to take, I mean, that ain't even our conversation, but I, I don't ever fill in for y'all on a, 
like, man, I hope they start using me. It's yeah. like, no, I hope he calls me if he can't do this again. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's I hope he's proud of me. That's it. <laughs> but he but but you you played a gig with, you know what I'm saying, with such I mean, because it's a, you know I've had I've I've had to hire I've had to call guys to sub gigs for me before, and I've had an artist come back and say, you know, hey, that guy was cool, but he played the gig like he was a sub. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Man. Like he knew he wasn't coming back. And then I've had guys be like, now that guy played the gig like, hey, you know, if y'all need me again, you know, I want to be the guy y'all call. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Not in a way where it's like, uh, not in a way where it's like I'm trying to take a gig, but also, like. If I'm gonna be here, I'm gonna be here. Yeah. So, um, and that's and that's the way it's supposed to be. That's that's the way it's supposed to be. That's the it way has we to be that we, way. we we learned it from from you. You know what I'm saying? Like have have integrity with with the music. Having to you know, like when people hire you, when you, people call you to show up, show up. Yeah. Like if you're gonna go, go. If you ain't gonna do it, if you ain't got time to do it, you know. Rex Rex talks about all the time. He's you know puts these posts up and stuff. Talks about you know. How he treats every gig like the gig. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So But that's how I treated everything I did in Chicago before I left Chicago. You did. You absolutely did. I know <laughs> I did. I, I was in very intentional with that because yeah. I was like it because to me it was everything I did in Chicago before I left Chicago, to me it was the biggest, greatest thing. Yeah. I don't even know why I felt like that. Yeah. But it was. Maybe it was because a lot of stuff I was doing, like, you know, was with the guys I, I really respected. Yeah. You know, Ron Ellison and Gerald and Percy Gray, you know, all of that. Like, I respected them. I wanted them to be proud of me. Yeah. But, like, everything I did, even if I played the club, whatever, whatever, yeah. I, everything I did, I wanted to, <clears throat> you know, put my best foot forward because I really did feel like it was the it was the most important thing at the time. Yeah. And that's, and, and, and that's one of the things that I got from you. It's one of the things I passed down the rest. Yeah. Like, that was one of the things I know I didn't say to him. I tried to show him that. Exactly. Yeah. You know. That's one of the things that, like, I treated everything, like, because, and, and the reality was, like, man, you don't know. I I, I could play a $50 gig where I meet somebody that pay me $5,000 for a gig, you know? Mm-hmm. So you never know. You know, I, I play a gig for cheap, or I play a gig for free, and meet somebody that hires me for, meet somebody that I end up going on a tour with, you know? Mm-hmm. So that was one of the things that I saw with you, you know, running around to to, to the clubs, to the musicals, seeing you in rehearsals, like, you know, I mean, I mean, I, I've come in those new directions. And granted, rehearsals are a little bit different now, you know, people yeah. don't rehearse just for rehearsal. It's like, <laughs> we gotta have something right. for, we gotta have something on a calendar to, to do a rehearsal, to rehearse. you know what I'm saying? New Direction was just like, it's Saturday. <laughs> new new right. like, like they was the church choir. Yeah, so, <laughs> so, uh, I mean, but Ooh, sitting in those, in those days, rehearsals, man, man and watching, you and Quinn seeing you guys just like week to week, I would see y'all just in there blazing and be like, man. And I remember when I was trying to play with uh I had I, I told I had to tell Rex, like, man, tell Gerald to call because Rex was out on the road <laughs> and I came home on the break and he was like, Man, I got I just got a call for I came I don't know what he got called for. I just got this call for something, I gotta go out. I supposed to have these gigs with New Direction. I'm like, man, please tell Gerald to call me, man. I'm like, I got my act together. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. Because Gerald was telling me, he was like, Calvin, like, you so busy. You, you you busy trying to get me Quinn. You trying to get me Teddy. They not here. And you got to realize, like, Gerald raised both of those drummers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's no way I could I could never make him think that I was either one of yeah. y'all. Yeah. <laughs> right. So he was just like, man, stop trying. Yeah. Like, just be be you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like play. Let me let me figure out how we can make Calvin Rogers fit with New Direction. He wanted it's, to do that instead of yeah. you trying to be a fake Teddy or a fake Quinn because you're not gonna fool none of us. Yeah. You're like you on your best day, and I, you know, like I feel like if you somebody says play like Teddy Campbell, I feel like I could lead the pack. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, but yeah, come through Rico. Reek, <laughs> he sounds like your alter I, ego. I, I really, man, no, bro. What? So I tell Calvin this story. You did. You told me about when you went to. Uh, he came to see me at the Tonight Show, and he let me hear him play for the first time. He was just coming to hang out, and our lead singer Dorian walked past the dressing room. And was like, man, why are you? He peeked in and said, man, why are you in there listening to yourself? And I was like, I'm <laughs> not. He walked in there. He looked. He was like, I'm sitting there the whole time, like. His, like, I ain't his never heard choices. nobody. Yeah, out of all y'all, oh, who's no, been he's, influenced by me. 
Yep. Y'all all still had y'all other thing or whatever, which he still does too, which is interesting because he yeah. don't play like me, nothing like me now, yeah. you know. But that video, maybe he was just channeling me. Maybe it was like if you said if I had to channel you, I could channel. He maybe he was just channeling me, but it's a it, lot of his it choices kind of scared though. The crap out yeah, of they sound a <laughs> lot alike. I had, so much so, Calvin, my mom when he was playing at my cousin's church, he was playing at my cousin Marcus' church when my cousin Marcus was pastor. Mm -hmm. My mom called me, and I mean, she ain't never said nothing about my plan. Mm -hmm. She was like, "There's this little guy. He's <laughs> so cute. He's playing drums at our church. He reminds me so much of you. He sounds so much like you." And I'm like, "My mama? <laughs> For my mama to say this? Oh yeah." When I heard him, I was like, "Whoa! Oh yeah, that's why." Yeah, that's scary. Sorry, I had to shout that no, out. No, no, yeah. no. <laughs> I haven't, I, I've, I've, I haven't heard a lot of Rico. Like, I was, I, I would see him around like a little bit before they moved out to LA, and I've, I've heard him play like on TV shows and things. I know he's bad, yeah, but I haven't heard a lot of no, him. He's like, his he went clone. To a, he went to a shed, but he still got his own thing. Like he's phenomenal. But he went to a shed at Nissan's church with all of the dudes. He <sighs> was there. <laughs> and Nissan called me and was like, hey man, Rico ate everybody up. Ooh. In LA? <laughs> was that's like, different. I was like, so who was there? <laughs> he went down the list. I was like, no. He was like, ooh. Yeah. Yeah. So he got the that just lets you know how nice he is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, Rico, phenomenal. Man, I, dog, I'm going to tell you this, Calvin, what changed. And what's funny is it has to do with both of y'all. What changed my life, another moment for me, was when you called me to do the Stellars. Oh, man. The same way you said you'll have Gerald call me, because, of course, I knew you yep. wasn't going to do it, but I'm like, I'm not going to ask him. Yeah. Can I was like, we, don't even, we got that type of relationship, yep. but that ain't what we do. I'm right. like, if you need me, cool. Right. And he was like, man, what you think about doing the Stellars? I said... <laughs> Excuse me? Yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking when you need me. Yeah, I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> man, I was looking Bro. at, I remember, like, again, that's, that's, and that's another, that's another moment where I was probably, I was just kind of like, but that moment, I was just, I saw you in a different light. I, that, that, that TV show was like, I'm like, man, this dude is a professional. He's a professional. He's, a, I, but I, I mean, I saw you in a different light. I saw your playing go to a whole nother level when you, when you went to LA, when you went out there and you started doing idol and things like that. And I was telling, I was telling Fred, I told Fred Nelson when, when I said the stuff, I was like, this makes sense for him to do it. Like he's a reader. You know what I'm saying? Like, it just makes sense. He worked with Ray Chu. Like, and so, and I, that's perfect what really, I, it was, it was the perfect fit. Mm -hmm. And so, um, Fred, Fred, and Fred was just like, oh, yeah, man, that, that sounds like, a guy. <laughs> that, that sounds like what we need. To, that sounds like the guy we need to get. But, Looking at, I remember seeing that show, and I remember watching Idol a couple of times, like, and I was just like, man, these guys are some real, like, some real professionals. Like, y'all, you, you two, seeing you two on TV gives like you look at a drum, you look at drums completely different when I see y'all on TV, because like, I'm looking at a guy that I know and I spend time with, but I'm looking at a guy that's completely in his element and but is like completely owning and completely dominating the paint right now you know what i'm saying like that's what it is it's like and, and i'm looking at it's i'm i'm like man this guy's not just a quarterback he ain't just a quarterback he ain't just a coach he's the quarterback he the coach he the offensive coordinator you know what i'm saying because at any moment you you getting everybody through these transitions yeah and i look at y'all and just be like Man, it's just it's amazing. I've I would I've looked at you on the Ricky Minor band so many times and been like, this this is why Ricky calls him. Mm -hmm. Because the way you join that band together mm -hmm. oh, is, yeah. is 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 different. And uh I've seen Rex do the same thing in bands. I see yep. I've seen different bands yep. that Rex was in and I'm like, Man, much respect to the guys that are there. But there's a different there's a there's a there's an element that's missing, and it's it's what he does when he's in that in that driver's seat. The glue. He he joins all of that stuff together. He makes all of it make sense. Sometimes you hear the music and you be like, oh man, yeah, yeah, was, ah, that's cool. 
But then I hear Rex play, and I'm like, oh, that's why it made that. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's what it yeah. is. And that's interesting that a drummer can do that because you have such mm -hmm. a, a awareness of, you know, you, because you're a producer and arranger, you know, all of these things. You're a, you're a musician, you're not just a drummer. And and you I, and I hear when you're playing, I hear you producing. Yep. Um, I hear you creating. I <laughs> yep. hear you being the music director. I hear you. I hear that you know everybody's parts. Yes. <laughs> I, I hear that you actually came up with the parts. Yes. You know what I mean? And yeah. that's that's like a, you know, that's a gift, man. Because you know, a lot of cats are just playing drums. Yeah. You know what I mean? Definitely. <laughs> but you 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 guys create, and again, and this is. One of the things that I probably I, I get from both of you guys at at this point, seeing you guys, you guys create a level of comfort for the musicians that are around y'all. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I, that was one of the things I noticed with Ricky. I'm like, man, everybody just seems to be because it's some of that stuff can be like it can be intimidating. Yep. You know, yep. transitions, oh, ins and outs, how quick it is. <laughs> you know, moving, especially yeah. when you start talking about meters and stuff like that. And I was looking, I'll be looking y'all on TV. And I'm like, man. The first year you did the Oscars, I was just like, this is a big ordeal. But I'm like, man, you moving them through these things. Like yeah. you I was like, wow. People and I said, I tell you hold on, I mean cut you I'll tell you the small things like coming behind him on the gig, Teddy be like, Oh, don't forget to get a click track a uh, metronome. Oh yeah. I'm like, oh, okay. But the first time I didn't have one. <laughs> you can't count them songs off. Mm -hmm. Ricky gonna say count it off. He gonna, oh, yeah. say, he gonna let you count it off. But people don't know how <laughs> humbling that is. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? To still be able to look at him and be like, okay, what I took for granted, mm -hmm. he warned you. Yeah. But it's about, like I said, listening and locking in. Like now you, know, you never see me without one. That's a lost art for a drummer to actually know the tempo of a song. Oh, 100% it is. These dudes don't know the tempo no. of a song. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, because everybody's playing with the track and whatever. Yep. I don't know. Maybe you know the tempo because you produce, you know BPMs. because It's still them. rare, though. I don't know. Yeah. I could be wrong, but it just feels like, I don't know. That, that's that, a that was a part. Thing. That was something I take pride in. It's like knowing tempo of the song. Like, yeah. How fast is that song? Like, I'll get on a, I can get on a, I can get on a gig, no matter what gig I'm on, I always, if I'm playing, if I'm sitting in, I'm at a club playing a song or whatever. They they throw out a song that I know. I'm very confident that I know the tempo of the song. Yeah, because I've had to like you know what I mean oh, count yeah. that thing off. And, like, you know what I mean. So that's just a, a, a anchor that I feel like is it would be helpful for drummers to know how fast a song is. What's supposed to feel like? Yeah, you know what I mean, what's the pattern? Yeah, what's the right pattern? Yeah. The original pattern to the song. Yeah. yeah. Calvin, I'll tell you this, bro. Thirsty? <laughs> I'm not an emotional guy at all. Iconic. I was like, who is this dude? It's like <laughs> that same guy you've known since you were six. But it was like, <laughs> I knew, I'll tell you this. I don't even know if he remembered this. I'm one of the dudes that remembers his transition into the recording Calvin he actually mm -hmm. is. It was between Ricky's first record you did and the second one. Yeah. But that was also in the space of those, uh, I think, one Sweet Holy Record. The first one. The, the higher, one. with higher on it. No, no, no. That was like Oh, Count, Count It All Joy. joy. Yeah. But the one after that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The that's one that the Daniel one, Weatherspoon did. Yeah. But Ted, it's like he went from this guy that can play, and you knew he was about to cut a lot of records. But now he went into like this Joel Smith phase. Like, Oh, that part is iconic. You know, and how it was I, just I was like, and I when I told when we talk about the R and B stuff, I was like, yo, just channel your sweet holy Calvin, early Calvin, early. <laughs> mm. and I'm gonna send you some of the songs, dog. But that's when that transition came. It's like, oh, he's playing this like he's owning this record. You know, I am white man can't jump. Uh, Wesley Snipes was like. Yo, you, 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 you listening to Jimmy, but you can't hear <laughs> Jimmy. <laughs> yeah, right. That's how I felt like after a while, like after, cause Rex was like, was telling me like, man, like I'm hearing the stuff he was showing, the stuff, the guys he's having me listen to, but I'm, I mean, I'm listening to him, but I ain't hearing them. Yeah. But then he was like, he was like, man, channel this, channel this, L listen at the early stuff, simplicity. Take, and then when you step out, it ain't even got to be that big of a yeah. deal. 
he's like, man, you know, and he and he knew because he studied R and B, so he already knew what Rob was gonna be looking for. Yeah, in a drummer. So wow. he was telling me, he's like, man, you're like, bro, simplicity. Like, you're gonna be nail that click, nail those transitions. When you step out, it can be subtle. It's going to bring, it's gonna be so because you ain't did nothing the whole time. And so yeah. when I did, and so one thing that was very one of the things that made me like was that Rob dug about me was that I was really good with the click track, but I was okay because man, one person that uh I gotta talk about that that I talk about too is Ricky Lawson. Mm-hmm. And oh, I watched God, Ricky yeah. on that live in Bucharest DVD. You know We've it. talked about that. <laughs> and man, Ricky when when uh uh is it Billy Billy Jean <laughs> and Mike dances for about seven, eight minutes, Ricky just playing that play. solid oh, back. He ain't playing nothing. But so that was like a thing for me. And so once I like I figured that Rex was just like he was making sense of all of this stuff for me. So yeah. So he was just telling me, like, man, simplicity. And then when you do step out, bro, all you got to do is give him a little flow time. Give him that. Or he was telling me even, like, he showed me the groove on Body's Calling. They remember Rob had a live version of Body's Calling oh, out on, like, V103 or something they was playing. And he James Knowles was playing that James one. Knowles. Mm. Oh, yeah. And so he was telling me, he's like, man, you got to nail this field. Got you. And I'm like, and he was making, and Rex is like, man, don't don't play a churchy, like, bro, like, no, you not hearing it, bro. He ain't come in on the crash. He went, I'm like, man, okay. So he was making sense of all of that stuff for me. So I went from, at a certain point, I went from just listening to hearing, you know what I'm saying. And now, like, and then when I, so then that's when I got. When I went back and listened to the Joel stuff, and then I'm like, okay. Then I went back and listened to, like, okay, let me get into this stuff. Really, really get into it. But Rex is the one that made me do that. Did you hear it? Yeah. He I like, told, he you like, know, man, what I you t- know all of this stuff, but you ain't getting in there like that, bro. You know what I told him, Teddy? I said, because I just said, well, earlier, I said I was a dude that came up. I was a, re- I recreated things. Mm-hmm. I told Calvin, I said, start looking at what you come up with as a part. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You yeah. playing a song like that's you, that's your part, but it's also your part. So yeah. now when somebody else has to play that, they have to play a part. Yeah. Play your part. Yeah. So yeah. it was like, and again, what's that sweet, holy, I was like, oh yeah. my God. And but, that's, that was really it. I, I started, started thinking about the same way a keyboard player had like the same way they have melodically, they got to build their chords around. That's why I just started thinking about the drums the same way. And once know, he broke it down to me that way, it just, well, you got it. Once he said it to yeah, you, you said, me and, <laughs> your parts, and then you became like, you was, you were writing Calvin Rogers parts. Yeah. Oh like, yeah. And they, weren't, and they weren't for other people to play. Mm-mm. Man. So I was like, do y'all I know, know? I know, I know we got to go. But wait, do you, do you y'all know that Aaron Spears was supposed to play that Thirsty record? Do y'all know that? No. Really? Yes. Yes. I definitely didn't know that. How? So Aaron Lindsay actually reached out to both me and Aaron Spears about the album, and so um, I don't know. I think Aaron Spears maybe was on the road. Um, Buddy played, right? Yep. Okay. Buddy played, but you know, they was all like, they was all real tight with Usher. Yep. And so um, I accidentally text Aaron Spears, trying to text Aaron Lindsay, to (laughs) tell him that I was available for the Thirsty album. So I text Aaron Spears and I said, yo, Aaron, what's up, man? I said, yo, um, I just checked. I'm good for the dates for the SAP record. Spears texted me back. It's like, yo, wrong Aaron, but hilarious. Uh, Lindsey actually hit me for that album first. He was like, man, I wasn't able to do it. Kill it, bro. Literally. Wow. So Aaron Spears was supposed to was supposed to do that. Was supposed to do that album first, but he wasn't able to do Dang. it. Dang. Yep. I had no. Does anybody know that I besides know Aaron? <laughs> wow, I that's know. crazy. I don't know if I don't know if Aaron well, that was ever... definitely a God thing where yeah. he was supposed to be doing whatever he was supposed to be. Yeah, doing. Yeah, because you you on that, to do that album. record because yeah. that was iconic. That yeah. was that's down in that Calvin Rogers will go down in history. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. you said that. <laughs> that no, you. Oh my God, bro. Yeah, man. 
that one will go out. Is that so, Calvin? Let me ask you this: What is one of your? Do you have a favorite record you've cut? I really like Power of One. Yeah, but I really like um, man. You surprisingly, my 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 favorite records is Tell, Tell the Devil I'm Back. Wow. I mean, just and that one is more like it's more like sentimental. Oh yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like that's when the crew was tight. You know what I'm saying? Me, Mark, Kevin, Rick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> my pops produced the record with Vashon. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to be a fool. You. <laughs> That's what y'all used to call. I was like, we, I still, yeah. we still the fools. Really? In my ball right now. Yeah. Um, uh, me and Rex was programming, you know what I'm saying? It was just emotional. That's like a record that I put on, I listened to. And, I, and that's one of those albums, like when I hear those songs, your mind, you see images yeah. in your yeah. mind. Yeah. You remember where you were. You remember nostalgia. You know, nostalgia. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that's one of my, I, I, I like Power of One. That's really one of my favorite albums, but Tell the devil I'm back. Yeah, you were able to really be a, a doctor in a sick room <laughs> on that power of one right there. You yeah. Was, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you was doctor. You was you, you was you was there this. like, yes, please. Hey, I remember um what was that? I, I went to I took my, my daughters to see uh Dream Girls, right? The songs, the movie starts, immediately starts. Like 45 seconds in, I text Teddy. Did you play on Dream Girls? <laughs> <laughs> like, yep. He's it's like, forty five seconds into the into the beginning of the movie. Well, there's another movie that y'all definitely probably will be checking out, but I did that Color Purple movie too. You did, oh, so yeah, so that's gonna be fun. Oh yeah, yeah, that's gonna be. Good. They redid the Color Purple. Yeah, yeah, Fantasia, Taraji P oh, Henson. Yeah, I seen. Yeah, it's crazy. It's when crazy. is it supposed to come out? Next month, December. Man, I don't I don't go to the movies a lot, yeah. but I can't wait to. That was gonna be crazy because Rick Ricky did some producing, Ooh. Ricky Diller, Ricky Diller. So quiet oh stuff. yeah, oh. yeah, it's gonna be crazy. It's crazy. That's gonna be nuts. Yeah, it's, 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 oh, yeah so that's dope. Be on the lookout for that. Oh yeah, so so color purple was iconic. The color purple. Yeah, yeah. that's dope. Yeah. Well, listen, this is uh, this was everything to me, y'all. I don't know what y'all was expecting. I don't know if y'all. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if we gave each other too much love or we, but, hey, y'all need to learn from this. Yeah, love, for real. Like. That's what it's about. Like, <laughs> listen, like I appreciate y'all too. Man. Like on all levels. And like I said, it's just gotta be more of this. Yeah. Like showing love. Like ain't you ain't diminishing nothing about mm-hmm. yourself showing love. You know what I'm saying? So like I said, I appreciate y'all for coming. You know. And uh, we definitely do this again. Yeah, we got to. For sure. That's it for sure right now. Yeah. <laughs> we All got right. to. <laughs> Good. Peace.